All right, now we're on to the next two targets. First one, the top target, I'm gonna go ahead and shoot the uh, Hornady Critical Defense. This was the load that was noticeably stouter than the rest, so we'll see what happens. Things are turning out pretty much like I expected as far as the point of impact and the, the pattern uh, between all the loads. There's really not enough difference to, to even notice. So, but you do notice the difference in the recoil between the loads, trust me. <laughs> Alright, let me go load, get the uh, next round ready and we'll do the bottom target. We're going to test the final load. And that's the uh, S&B or Cellier and Below buckshot. All right. We'll analyze the targets uh, later when I get back to the man cave. You'll get a closer look at it. But uh, they're all pretty much the same. Uh, so I'm probably going to choose the uh, load that has the lowest recoil for what I intend to keep in. So uh, next, what we're going to do is a re is a reliability function test of the shotgun. We'll be right back in a moment. I'm going to do a little functioning test on the shotgun. I've loaded up one in the chamber and the full four in the magazine of the Rio Royal Buck. And we're going to see how our terrorist friend over here likes it. I don't think he liked it very much and there was no no problems with the functioning of the gun like I said it's you know not like a, a real Remington not as smooth it doesn't doesn't pump the action quite as smoothly it's a little bit a little bit uh, grittier a little bit uh, jerkier but it works and uh, the bad guy won't know the difference so uh, that concludes the range part of our test. Uh, shortly, I'll be back in the man cave and we'll do some analysis of the targets. I'll give you some more uh, information on my impressions of the recoil and uh, my final comments uh, concerning the ammo and the gun. So uh, I hope that you're finding this to be useful and informative. And uh, I'll see you back at the man cave shortly. Okay. Well, welcome back to the man cave. I'm going to do a little bit of target analysis here. Although uh, it doesn't really need a whole lot of analysis, uh, the targets pretty much speak for themselves. Uh, first thing, uh, I'll talk about the uh, Royal Rio Buck. Uh, or the Rio Royal Buck, and uh, my analysis of how it performed, uh, that would be this one right here. And the uh, Rio Buck being marked low recoil, it did have the lowest felt recoil of all four loads that I tested. Now normally with uh, low recoil, the reason it's low recoil is because it's loaded to lower velocities than standard buckshot. And I think that uh, that, that it becomes apparent with the uh, pattern that we got out of it. Now, the, uh, because we were only shooting, like I said, about 15, 18 feet at most, all the patterns are pretty, pretty close in, in size. The one thing with the Rio that I noticed was that uh, whereas six of the nine pellets along with the wad 
went into this two inch uh, hole here. Uh, three of the pellets spread out a good bit, giving an overall seven inch group, which in this case, uh, the bad guy uh, wouldn't care. However, I would uh, expect that at further distances, more of the pellets would probably spread out like this and, and uh, it looks like it would probably be a uh, somewhat inconsistent pattern because I only shot one one round at the target and it was a short distance it's not you know I can't really say definitively this was not a definitive test but for the purpose of defending the man cave this is perfectly fine and, and I have no problem with that. Now the second one uh, was the Hornady Tech which is right here. Okay now this one went right to point of aim. My, you couldn't see the laser dot on the targets out in the daylight out at uh, uh, you know in the camera when we were shooting but uh, I always had the, the dot held as, as close to the red circle here as I could. So that gives you an idea of the uh, point of impact in relation to the point of uh, laser aim. They're all pretty close. Now this one gave me a three inch core group with one pellet getting away for a total of, I'm sorry, this total group would be three inches. And this was a much tighter group of one and three quarter inches. Uh, the Hornady tap was fairly stout. And in fact, um, I would say that it was almost as stout as the critical defense. They were, they were pretty close, but it was a different recoil impulse. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Now, speaking of the critical defense, that was the next one right here. And that gave the tightest group of them all. I was pretty impressed with that. It's a one and three quarter inch group overall, including the, the, the wad hole. So I would suspect that uh, the critical defense would probably give you the densest pattern at distance. Uh, now the Hornady critical defense definitely had the uh, the stouter recoil. The tap and the critical defense were very close in in the stoutness of the recoil but the recoil impulse between the two was different. By that I mean with the Hornady tap the uh, recoil was fairly fast and sharp whereas with the uh, critical defense Oh well, <laughs> with my, my props are rebelling. Get back up there. The critical defense was stout, and but the recoil impulse was more of a slower, hard push. And that's the best way I can describe it. Now, all these recoil comparisons are subjective, so it may be different for you. But that's how it felt to me. Now, the last one was the uh, the Cellian Below. And um, I was pretty impressed with the pattern it gave. It started to spread out a little bit. Yeah, okay started to spread out a little bit because you can see individual pellets here holes here all around the uh, the main hole but an interesting thing is that of all of them this is the one where the wad went through a separate hole it didn't go through the same hole so I found that interesting so that means that, that this two inch raggedy hole here is all buckshot and uh, that would definitely do the job 
Now the recoil on the S and B, it was um, more than the Rio, but a little bit less than the Hornady tab. About halfway in between. So it wasn't too bad. Uh, I, you know, would like to probably do more testing in the future of these loads at, at further distances out of one of my other shotguns. And uh, when and if I get around to doing that, then um, I'll probably film that and put it on YouTube as well. Alright, uh, okay, a few final comments before I end the video. The uh, shotgun functioned flawlessly throughout the test. Uh, there's at one point uh, when I'm shooting at the berm that uh, I believe it's the critical defense shell uh, appears to get caught up in the, the ejection port when I'm, when I'm ejecting it. That was not the fault of the gun. That was the fault of my shaky hands. I just didn't manipulate the slide crisply enough and so it had nothing to do with the gun itself. The gun had no malfunctions of any kind. And I was actually very impressed with its, uh, with its feel and performance throughout the test, uh, especially for a $200 shotgun. Now, the uh, laser sight, as I mentioned before, is just an old aim shot that I've had laying around. I don't, you know, this wasn't a test of the laser sight durability, but I, so I don't really know how well it would stand up under continued uh, shotgun recoil. But uh, for the purpose that I built this, it really doesn't have to stand up for very long. So, but I, I think that it'll do fairly well. Uh, I think it'll do the job I need it to do. And as you can see, um, it. Uh, can definitely ruin a bad guy's day. Uh, I would like to uh, thank you for viewing my videos. I want to thank you for subscribing if you have. If you haven't subscribed yet, uh, I'd like to uh, ask you to please do so. Uh, if you thought that uh, the video was um, informative, uh, and useful to you then then I hope you'll subscribe and I hope you'll uh, hit like if you liked it and oh, hit dislike if you didn't like it uh, but I would hope that uh, if you didn't like it and you do hit dislike then please leave a comment to tell me what about it you did not like so I can help um, maybe improve my videos in the future so that you will like those better if you liked it, I hope that you'll leave me some comments to tell me what you did like about it. If it, uh, if it helped you in any way, I would like to know that. Um, if you just want to say hello, do that. Uh, please leave comments. Um, I'm always open to constructive criticism. I apologize for the length of these, this video review. Um, I didn't originally intend it to be three parts. But uh, being my first one, it wasn't as well organized as it should have been, and things just took a lot longer than I expected. So I hope to do better in the future. And I hope that you'll give me suggestions uh, if you can think of ways in which I, I can improve my videos for the future. I'm always open to constructive criticism, as far as, and I'll always try to uh, give an honest answer and, and answer the uh, comments that I get. Uh, if you're a troll, I'll probably ignore you, uh, but I might even answer you too. Just depends. Well, that's it for uh, this video review of the IEC slash Norinco Hawk 981R Remington clone made in China and the Royal Rio, uh, Rio Royal Buckshot. I keep getting that backwards as well as the other buckshot. And that's it for now. And uh, I'll be working on more videos and getting them uploaded as soon as I can. And uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Well, I guess this is it, old pal. It sure is. What? The end. Ooh.